happy to introduce Maria Cochran, who works at Microsoft, and she's a search uh, search marketing manager. So tell us more about you and what we'll be learning today. Yes, thank you. So um, I'll actually get into a little bit more about myself uh, in my presentation, but we're going to be talking about how to be strategic and not tactical with your paid search accounts. I find that as a little bit of a control freak, I tend to dive into the weeds and stay very tactical, but it's so important to take that strategic view and focus on that in order to drive your tactics. And that's what we'll be talking about. One second, let me present. Um, you know what? We are going to share my entire screen. And yes, here we go. All right, so like I said, Paid search, super important to me. I've been doing it for a while, but the idea around being strategic versus tactical has always kind of tripped me up a little bit. Um, as far as an introduction to myself, I have been doing search for about 15 years now. Uh, dabbled a little bit with SEO, dabbled a little bit with local, a whole bunch of different things, but paid search has really become my passion what I focused on. Uh, this is a picture of my family in the fall with the pumpkins because, you know, I love Halloween and pumpkins. Um, I've been at Microsoft for about two years now. And prior to that, I was over at Adobe. So I've had a lot of experience with B2B, B2C, any type of e-commerce or lead generation, as well as subscription-based services. So a little bit of experience in each area that I think you will be able to take home some information that'll help you in your day-to-day. -day. So when we think about the evolution of search, I love what Will was saying when he was talking about all of the paid-only search engines and back in the day when it was Overture and there's all these different aspects of search that we've kind of worked our way through. So at the beginning for paid search, I was really looking at this as, okay, what do I do with my job? I create ads. I do a whole bunch of keyword research. And then we got a little bit more in depth with that. And we would create all of these Excel macros and we go, okay, if I have this keyword plus this modifier in this exact location, what does this turn into for my keyword list? And you'd end up with millions and millions of keywords. Uh, we've played around with the evolution of match types, right? We've played around with the evolution of ad types, image extensions, different ad extensions that we could use in our day-to-day -day lives. And everything has slowly started to change. We've, we've become more and more dependent on the entire idea around automated bid strategies, around AI when we start thinking about chat GPT. So what does that mean for us as a paid search manager and how am I bringing value to my company? I think Will's point with SEO and paid search working together is so vitally important. But then you also bring in the idea of how do I continue to prove my work? Am I partnering with my SEO buddies? Are we talking about the same type of content? Are we learning from each other? But also, we have all of these insights that Will was just talking about that the rest of the company doesn't have. Other marketing channels cannot tell you what keywords are trending, where your views are, what people are interested in. So how do we bring that value back to our business and continue to provide additional insights that are outside of your traditional paid search work, but are truly invaluable in trying to drive a business forward? And then finally, testing and planning. Uh, it's really vital that you continue to work through this throughout the year. You can create a plan at the beginning of the year, you can create a test plan at the beginning of the year, but you have to keep working through this. And I found that it's better to be more structured when you're talking about planning and testing um, than just this idea of, oh, okay, maybe in Q2 I might play around with chat GPT or, oh, we're going to launch RSAs, but I'll figure out how to do the ad copy testing piece later. But let's just get live because Google says I have to. Um, so stepping back and looking at strategy versus tactics, like I said, I personally find myself always getting stuck in 
how am I going to roll something out? What is my detailed plan? But it's vitally important that you step back and you say, okay, what am I trying to accomplish? Am I trying to increase revenue by X percent this quarter? Am I trying to build brand awareness for a new line of business for a new product that might be rolling out? Um, how am I partnering with the rest of my company and trying to move this business forward? So I've kind of broken this into two different areas of uh, strategy and tactics. And this is how I think about it. What are you trying to accomplish? Very high level. Are you in league with your leadership? Are you understanding what their goals are? And overall, how does search play in to help that move forward. Then you take the tactic side of that and that's where you get really detailed and you say, okay, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z on these dates with this timeline. I have very concrete actions. I have a timeline, I have deliverables. I can change this if I want to, as long as I'm communicating out to my stakeholders, but making sure that I am very explicit in those tactics helps me deliver on the strategy piece. And then always evaluate through your metrics we would be nothing without being able to tie it back to some sort of a result. So the new world of SEM, what do we do? Automation saving us time? Uh, are robots going to replace us? No, they're not. So we look at planning. What is our highest impact items? Do we want to say yes to everyone? Uh, if you're like me, I'm kind of a yes man and I'm like, Sure, I can take it. Let's try it. So what will have the highest impact that's tied back to my strategy that I can implement with the lowest amount of lift possible on my side? Um, and what I mean by that is how many hours of resources, how many other teams do I need to pull into this and how much do I impact the bottom line? Um, the execute and analyze piece. This is where we get into that. What insights can I bring back to the company? How can I help drive the business forward that nobody else really has except search? Testing. I love testing. We'll get into this in just a little bit. But what new opportunities do we have? How do we compete with those video views? How do we compete with the images? Because we are the paid ads. Well, there's a lot that we can actually do. And then again, KPIs. Are you looking at the right thing to drive the business forward? One thing that I absolutely hate is share a voice. When we have new products launch, when you have a new line of business and you're like, oh, I just want to show up. I want people to see us when they're looking for our products. That's great. Share a voice just means I showed up in the search engine. What are they doing on the site? Are they engaging with us? Are they clicking on the ad? How far down the funnel do I want to bring them? So having those conversations with your stakeholders on, are we looking at the right thing? You might think you want share a voice, but in reality, you want engagement on your site because that means that you're bringing people into your site who are interested in your product. I put together a little timeline here for you, and this is what I think of as I start any fiscal year in planning. First, we have a project brief, which I get from my leadership team. I understand what their goals are. I understand if there's any new products, if there's promos that are being released, where's the direction of the business going. And then I create a strategic brief, all of that high level uh, actions that we were talking about. Then we go into account planning. This is the tactical piece. All right. What markets do I want to go into? What channels do I want to be on? What tests do I want to run? Are we looking at the different ad types and extensions? What's my reporting cadence? I can't tell you how many times we have launched tests or new initiatives. And it's like, oh, well, we've been running this for a month. Why don't we have reporting on it? What is the right cadence for that? Well, we need time for the account to build data. We need time, usually about two weeks, for any of the bidding algorithms to come in to play and start being able to optimize our accounts. So what does that normal cadence look like? Is it twice a month? Is it once a month? What feels right for you and your business as well as your purchase timeline funnel? We talked about the KPIs a little bit, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, execution, I would just say make sure you are executing. You have very clear dates. We put together launch calendars where I have entire months for a quarter planned out already. Here is every single thing that I want to accomplish in the next three months. And these are the dates that we are going to hit in order to make that happen. And then you have to do the work. 
Testing, again, detailed testing is invaluable. You have to make sure that you're planning that out, understand your work back schedules, what you need from other teams to execute, and then the reporting piece, and then analysis, and then you start all over again. So I wanted to show an example of what our paid search briefs look like. Now, obviously, I don't have our specific data in here, but the idea is, when I'm planning, I'm going to say, okay, here is all of my high level overviews. What is my goal? How do I want to accomplish this? Um, what do I want to include within this campaign or account? And then I put that all on this side. Then I say, okay, what's my financial value? What's the investment? What's my budget? Overall percentage value. This is actually really interesting and it helps bring a lot of focus in when you have a multi-channel campaign running. Um, and what I mean by multi-channel is what percentage is page search taking up compared to display, compared to social? And then what additional value? What is my goal? What is my revenue goal here? How am I bringing additional value in from other channels? And then we also list out our goals and what we expect the outcomes to be. Another view of our planning parameters is I take that brief that we just looked at and now I say, okay, very explicitly, here is my campaign goal. Here is my media objective. I will list out the engines I will be running on. I will list out my budget and what my cost per acquisition or my revenue goal is. I put all of my markets in. We look at our audience um, targets that we want to go after. We look at our KPIs and then explicit timings. And I wanted to share both these slides with you all because I love being able to repurpose things. So hopefully if you like these, use them and it'll make your life a little bit easier in your planning and being strategic stages. Okay. When I'm building out a campaign, I am looking at what is my strategy here? So what I'm showing is this is my campaign business objective. What is the intent of this specific campaign compared to another? I'll use an example of I have Microsoft 365 or Office, right? And then I have Word or Xbox or PowerPoint or any of these other products. Each of those are going to have their own unique objective. And I want to know, A, what is my objective? Who's funding this so that if I need to go and ask for incremental budget, I can. Or if I have budget that's decreased, I know who I can talk to from a finance side. Um, my target audience, is this an evergreen campaign? Or is this something that we're just going to be running for a couple quarters, a couple months? Uh, what types of keyword categories are we going to be running on? Are we doing brand only? Are we doing non-brand? Are we doing compete? And listing not only the keyword categories out, but what the messaging is going to be along with those keyword categories. As well as the landing pages. Do I have content on my site to back up what I'm bidding on? To Will's point, am I the most relevant for this search. I feel like paid still earns it as much as SEO, right? Are we relevant? I can't just bid on some random term if I don't have the content behind it. I mean, I can, but I'm going to pay a lot more. And they're probably not going to show. So this is how we think of setting up our campaigns and everything that we're looking at in order to get through that type of strategy and planning. It's, it's very detailed, but it will help in the long run. The other thing I like to do, uh, and I still consider this more of a strategy piece than tactics, but it's coming back in about twice a year and looking at my campaign parity. Am I in parity between Microsoft ads, Google ads, Yandex, Baidu, whoever, Naver, whatever the case might be? Am I using the same messaging across each of those engines? Are we doing the same type of targeting? Are we looking at the same bid strategies? And just checking to make sure every single piece of our campaign is in parity. And if not, what is the reason behind that? Is it something that got overlooked? Or was it an intentional reason behind why I might be targeting PC and desktop on Google, but mobile and Microsoft ads or whatever the case might be? Another view of a keyword matrix, taking that slide two slides ago when we were talking about the campaign strategy, 
where we said, okay, here's a keyword category, taking this down one more level so that when we get questions from our stakeholders, why are we not showing up for X, Y, Z, or why is this ad showing up? Okay, here's my keyword category. Here are my keyword examples. I'm never going to give my execs every single keyword that we bid on. It just opens a can of worms, but I can give you examples of what falls into each keyword category. Here's our messaging, landing page, primary KPI. The other thing that we started doing, and I really like this view when we talk about partnering with our other channels and other media buddies, is what is the experience across each place that somebody might find us, whether that's TikTok, whether that's Facebook, whether that's a search engine. Here is my search engine ad that I'm showing right now. Here is my social ad. Here are my display ads. How is the messaging in parity across each of these? Are we taking somebody on a journey and expecting them to understand that they are looking at the same product in each area, but they're learning a little bit more and then driving them into what landing page? So we've decided to put everything together and show here's everything in the media side. And then this is the landing page that we're driving them to. We also do something called quarterly expansion opportunities, QEOs. And what this is, is just an opportunity for us to come in and say, okay, what else do we want to do? We put together our plan at the beginning of the year. Is there anything new going on? Do we want to add in certain keywords? Do we want to add in markets? Great, let's go ahead and put that into our plan and start working on that moving forward. Okay, core priorities and in insights and KPIs. This is something that is really important to me, and I spend a lot of my time on this, is A, what is the source of truth? Are we all looking at the same data? Sometimes the data that we're optimizing to isn't the same data that's being reported on because of data latency. Um, they could be filtering out time for a free trial to a paid subscription. Do we have any fraud? What's going on? But with bidding algorithms, you know, we, we have the data that we get on the site or we're putting into a feed, an offline data feed, and they don't always match up. So how close is this and what is the source of truth? And do you know the slices of data that you're looking at, because you can tell any story depending on how you want to slice the data. One thing that we have looked at here is how do you set your core KPIs? And this is just the idea of, all right, for each level of engagement inside of our campaigns, what is the KPI for that? Broad reach. Are we just trying to get awareness? Demand. Are we looking for an indirect conversion? Meaning, are they doing something on the site that is an engagement? Did they put something in a cart and leave? Actual conversion, revenue, am I driving dollars to our bottom line? And then finally, retention. And so what we do is put together this chart. Here's the KPIs for each of these. And then we look at how does search fall into each of these areas and how do we want to go that? Testing and planning. I talked about putting together a testing plan. This is grayed out um, because I literally opened up an Excel that we had. Uh, but this is what we look at in terms of how do we do a proposed test for the year. We look at what quarter it is, what channel, if it's social, SEO, paid search, whatever. What is my testing and le learning category? Is it ad copy? Is it landing page? Is it conversion? Um, what the description is, is the test approved, budgets, things of that nature. But we list every channel out together, and that helps us allocate our resources. Because honestly, a lot of times, especially if you're looking at a landing page test, you have the same group of people trying to make every single channel happy. So going back to that impact, what is the impact of all of our proposed tests? And then what's the priority across all the channels for those tests? Once we put together everything and we decide on what we want our test to be, we look at what our testing approach is. What is the business opportunity for this? Why am I testing this? Am I testing this because a stakeholder came to me and said, oh, you know, I, I really want to move this button from the top left corner of the page down to below the fold, or I want to move this product over to the middle of the page. No, like what? why are we doing this? What are we trying to do? Are we trying to increase paid subscriptions versus free trials? 
Are we trying to push a specific product? What are we trying to test? Am I trying to put out business messaging? Um, do more with less type of ad copy is something that I'm testing right now versus our evergreen ad copy that is more tech spec heavy. Um, so really outlining each of these items on the business opportunity side, what my campaign information is, how much I'm going to spend on it, the excuse me, the flight date of the test, what my landing page is, markets, et cetera, and then define your success. It's okay to fail. Fail fast, fail hard, learn from it, and iterate on it. But make sure that you put out at the beginning of your test, this is what I think is going to happen. If it works, terrific. If it doesn't, all right, terrific too. Let's learn from it and move forward. And then report. Make sure you come back and you take from this slide your measurement approach. You come right back in and you say, all right, here's my reporting. Here's everything that I stated I thought would happen. And now here are our results of that test. And I know I'm going a little bit fast here. I think I have about two minutes left. Um, Again, testing next steps. This is showing an example where we did a couple different of uh, keyword themes. What did we want to have happen? Um, this was the result of the test. Now what? What's our next iteration? Do we try a different landing page and outline out what your next steps are? Never just test and say, okay, we're good. That worked. It didn't work, but I'm done. No, testing goes on forever and it's amazingly fun. Insights into SEM. This is what I was talking about when I said we have abilities to drive information the rest of our marketing buddies do not have. Um, this chart in particular, I took a keyword theme. I took three different keyword themes and I was having questions on what are we doing year over year? And each color here is a different keyword theme. And the question was, how are we doing by search queries that you can get from Google? How are we doing year over year? What does that tell me? That tells me is the demand there for a certain product? Is the demand there for a keyword theme that I am bidding on? Where are we winning and where are we losing? What do we need to be aware of? Um, and you take this to your executives and they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like we didn't realize that our demand in the market for a branded term is decreasing but over here, we have this sleeper product that's doing really well. And yeah, let's put some more effort behind that and look into that and try and market more there. Or you take it and you go, okay, I want to do non-brand now instead of brand because the, we need to reach new people. We also look at funnel intent, awareness versus purchase versus retention. And how are we doing with that? So you can see like I'm Literally, it's the same query data. I'm just changing this from one, from a keyword theme, to funnel intent. How does my story change? This is the exact same information, but you can tell on this slide, the green keyword theme was way above the other two. When I look at funnel intent, all right, we're kind of evening out here. The black guys are, are down here, the black and gray. He's down here on his own, but blue and green are pretty even now. So how do I want to share this? And what is the story that I can tell my leadership team with that data? And then executive summaries, just as another view. Uh, again, I like giving examples of how to present the data. But if we take that keyword theme, the funnel intent or region, what is the percentage breakdown in our query volume and my investment volume? And then what is the actual performance doing? How much revenue am I driving from each of these? And it really starts to tell a story that you can use to help drive true business insights and really up-level your paid search efforts here. And